passed the Wire TV. Again, you asked, we answered, everybody wanted the Risen Star by the Thoroughgraph numbers and patterns, and uh, we're going to deliver that in just a minute. Uh, we've been extremely, extremely successful with these Thoroughgraph shows. Uh, most of our viewers seem to love them, so we're going to keep bringing them to you as long as we can. Uh, the Risen Star has come up uh, the most interesting and exciting of the der Derby preps so far this year. Uh, Derby Radar will be out this week as well. Uh, this episode will be uh, Jim Gazelle and his brother Kevin Gazelle. Uh, that'll be coming out sometime later today, maybe tomorrow morning, I'm not sure. Uh, and we got a lot of other exciting things happening at Pass the Wire and Pass the Wire TV. Jeff Metz is going to start doing and has started doing already his own show on the channel. He interviewed Carrie Brogdon, who is an extremely successful and knowledgeable uh, breeder out of Lexington, Kentucky. Uh, phenomenal interview. Uh, so, so much uh, good information in that interview about the breeding and even sales side of the industry and, you know, stallions and mares and, 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 and selecting the right combo and, you know, how you have a shot to, you, you know, maybe hit a home run and you know, what a lot of people look for that maybe Carrie doesn't. Just a lot of really super fascinating and, and interesting information if you're a lover of the game and want to know more about the breeding and sales side. Uh, and we're going to delve more into the sales side in, in, in the future. This one was a little bit more, uh, Jeff focused a little bit more with Carrie on, on, on the breeding aspect. Again, if you haven't seen the uh, Jim Gazelle, Dylan Davis interview, that, that these last two interviews uh, were both phenomenal. We've got a couple of new people coming on the channel as well. We're excited about that. Some different shows, different kind of shows. My shows will still be there, but uh, a lot of growth, expansion, and, 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 and venturing into different areas on Past the Wire TV. We may be even doing some sports stuff uh, as well. We're talking to some people that are really good uh, in, that, in that arena and we may be bringing that on, on, on board as well. But today we got the Risen Star by the Thoroughgraph Numbers and Patterns. We're going to get to that, but we're already a winner because we're drinking delicious Shorebet coffee out of probably, you can see it here, one of the nicest tumblers that you will ever find anywhere. I love the tumbler. I love the coffee. Uh, it's delicious, and you start your day with it, you're already a winner. So... Let's get to the Risen Star by the Thoroughgraph Numbers and Patterns and see what shakes out. Thank you for visiting Pass the Wire TV, the YouTube channel of PassTheWire.com. Hey, sure bad coffee. Mm, put that giddy up in your cup. That giddy up in your cup. Sure bet coffee. Giddy up, giddy up, giddy up. Mm. They're off in the 2023 First Crop Sires race. Maximus Mischief makes the lead with the most two-year-old maiden special winners by any sire. On the backstretch, Matoli and Omaha Beach close the gap with stakes performers from coast to coast. Vino Rosso finds his best and leads on the turn with four grade one colts on dirt. But it's Matoli with his third TDN Rising Star. Your champion freshman leading an impressive Spendthrift Superfecta. All right, we're back and we're ready to go. Uh, let's see who gets the keys to the Ferrari. Uh, you know, we've done these shows before. Most of you are familiar with them. Uh, the success has been phenomenal. And hopefully we can keep that coming with a race like the Risen Star, which, as I said earlier, is, is probably the most exciting of the Kentucky Derby preps and probably the best of the Kentucky Derby prep and point races thus far. Uh, it's a heck of a race, and I'm excited to see it. I'm excited to do it, uh, see where the numbers take us. Again, see who gets the keys to the Ferrari. And uh, 
how things shake out. Now, most of you remember and know, and you know, for the for the for the people that may be catching these thoroughbred shows for the first time, this is not about handicapping and dissecting the race and going over the pace, all the other intangibles and everything else. This is gonna, in my view and in my opinion, and the way I interpret and read the numbers and patterns on thoroughbred, tell us who's fast, who's not that fast, who's getting faster, who's not getting faster who's going to go forward, who's going to regress. We've been spot on with that. And and and, and a lot of times uh, since we've been doing these shows, uh, you know, our top horse or our uh, most likely or one of our most likely horses to move forward um, has done that. And a lot of them have won. So hopefully we can continue that trend. And, and, and like I say, you know, there's a, a million and one ways to – interpret and read thoroughbred. Uh, I've been doing them, doing it a long time. Uh, I consider myself as good as anybody when it comes to, you know, reading and, and deciphering the patterns. Uh, but if you've got a different way of doing it and you're successful, uh, by all means do it. But it's a great tool uh, and it definitely helps create an edge for the serious player and even the the, the, the not-so-serious player, but just somebody that really wants an edge and really wants to, you know, have everything at their disposal that they can have to help them win, uh, it does it does provide that opportunity. So uh, questions, put them in the comments. Reach out for me. I love helping people learn more about Thorograph and how to read them and, and how to interpret them at, at least the way that I do. Uh, there's a show you can go back and watch where – um, Jeff Franklin and I, and Jeff's from Thoroughgraph and an extremely knowledgeable horse racing guy and, 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 and better student of the game, uh, like myself, uh, we talk about the bounce and the regression, um, and what that really is and what that really means and how many people, you know, get that wrong. And we're going to be doing some more shows like that going forward as well. Uh, I personally love the early in the year three-year-old races i think the numbers and the patterns uh while not as lengthy as some of the older horses and not as brief as just the two-year-olds or you know the races where you know everybody's got one start which can also be telling but these races uh when you've got the two-year-olds that have just you know recently turned three are my favorite uh races to really rely heavily on the thoroughbred numbers and patterns and that runs you know, straight probably through the Derby and the Triple Crown races uh, mid-year, I, I I would categorize those those three-year-old races as as extremely um, uh, in sync with 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 how I read the numbers and the patterns. So we'll see what happens. We'll uh, we'll talk about some of the angles and things that we've talked about in the past. If you're new to these shows and you're not familiar with them, um, you know. Questions are always welcome. Put them down in the comments. We get back to everybody. If you like the show, subscribe. Hit the notifications button so you never miss any of these episodes. Like I said, we got new people coming on. We got a, a lot of other great stuff out there uh, and a lot more coming up with some new interesting people, some of which will surprise you, some of which who may not surprise you. But a lot, of, a lot of great stuff that you'll only hear and see on Past the Wire TV. Like these shows, you'll only hear and see on Past the Wire TV because that's where I'm at and you're not going to see me anywhere else. Uh, okay, uh, let's get into the race. Uh, on the rail, we've got Keith DeSormo and Tizzy Indy. Uh, Tizzy Indy ran a bunch of times as a two-year-old, did not set the world on fire uh, 34, 25 and three quarters, 26 and three quarters, 14 and a half, 14 and a half, uh, 16 and a half to close out his year in December at the fairgrounds, um, raced at Churchill Downs, Indiana, fairgrounds, Colonial Ellis, kind of been all over the place. Comes back as a three-year-old. And one of the things we've talked about, we like first time three-year-olds that go past their best two-year-old number. Uh, it's indicative of a horse growing up, getting mature, getting faster, which is 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 what we're really looking for. Um, 
he did that, but barely. Uh, he ran a 14 in his race at, 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 at the fairgrounds. You know, his prior fastest race was a 14 and a half. So, you know, he beat that by, you know, a very slim uh, margin. So he did he get faster? Yeah. But those kind of numbers don't even put him in the ballpark with most of these horses. He would have to make a enormous second off the layoff or second time three-year-old forward move in order to be considered a contender based on his thoroughgraph numbers and patterns. I don't see it. I don't see any reason to see it. So we'll move along to the next horse, which is Awesome Ruta uh, from Joseph Foster. Uh, this horse ran a couple of times, well, five times as a, as a, as a, as a two-year-old, already run once as a three-year-old, and here we go. Uh, we got 18 and three quarters, regresses to a 17, goes back forward to a 14, 14 and a half, 14 and a half again. Comes back as a three-year-old and, you know, shows that positive sign, goes to a 12. New top, new fastest number. But again, not nearly fast enough to compete with the better horses in here or the faster horses in here. And again, he would need to make a dramatic forward move, second off the layoff, or second time three-year-old, really, more, more so than off the layoff because he really didn't get a break. You know, he ran in December, then he ran in January. So it's second time three-year-old, but too, too much of a move forward he would have to make uh, for me to call him a contender based on his numbers and patterns. Uh, Anna Marie, uh, interesting, interesting. Uh, Anna Marie, what do we got? We got... As a two-year-old, the Churchill Downs, 11, 7, 5 and a half, getting faster. Progression, pretty good progression, too. Um, 11, 7, 5 and a half. Uh, first time three-year-old, Saturday in the Risen Star. Probably going to go forward. Uh, and, you, you know, if, if, he does, if he does go forward off to five and a half, uh, contender depending on how how much forward he goes and how much forward some of the others go but this one definitely does have a forward moving pattern and is definitely a horse to watch uh, sierra leone which those of you who have been watching my kentucky derby radar shows uh know that i am extremely high on on, on this horse uh if you put i don't think anybody um, I mean, maybe Harry Houdini, if he came back uh, from the dead, but there's only one that I know that have done has done that. Uh, I, I, you know, I, 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 I am extremely high on 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 Sierra Leone, uh, and his pattern and numbers do not sway me from 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 that position now again we can't pick the derby winner today but like i was about to say if you put a gun to my head uh and said i had to pick the derby winner uh on february 15th i would say sierra leone uh, he's my 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 early derby radar horse and has been since probably since the uh, uh probably since his maiden race but certainly since the Remsen when he ran that race with um, Dornock, who was highly regarded and, and and very good. And that's an interesting race. And, you know, we'll talk a little bit about that race, even though we're focused on the thoroughbred numbers and patterns. I thought that um, in contrary to what a lot of other people thought that Sierra Leone ran the much better race. Now, a lot of people are of the opinion that Dornock on the inside to come back again was dead game to beat him and just proved um, that he had more heart than him and was just, you know, gritty and tough. And I agree with that to a point. I agree that he showed he was gritty and tough. I agree that he showed a lot of heart to come back on the inside. But personally, I believe that Sierra Leone ran a much better race. Uh, big, wide, monstrous move. Traveled about 50 yards, maybe more. <laughs> and I'm not exaggerating further. Than, than Dornock did and, uh, you know, had every right to kind of come up a little short, pull himself up, uh, get a little weary, get a little confused in those last couple of strides when, when Dornock was able to come back on the inside 
and 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 and, and outgame him. I thought that Sierra Leone looked like a horse that was really going to develop, um, big strong horse that was going to you know come into himself, and we'll find out whether I was right about that on Saturday. Uh, he adds blinkers, which I find interesting. Uh, you know, I don't ever question anything that Chad Brown does with a horse. He always does the right thing, always does what's best, knows his horses extremely well, points for races as good as anybody in a game. Uh, and when he makes a change, he's got a reason and knows what he's doing. He doesn't just really experiment. Uh, he may say that sometimes uh, to be politically correct and not kind of, um, you know, sound quote cocky but i personally believe that if he's experimenting he's doing it with an extremely um solid foundation of knowledge that it's probably going to pan out and be the right thing to do that's just my belief uh, sierra leone uh runs a nine first time out not setting the world on fire but respectable um goes forward in that race in the rems and in the mud to 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 a uh, four and three quarters um, or is that four and a half, whatever, uh, comes back first time, first time, first time three-year-old, uh, has been working extremely steadily at what I consider a very deep, uh, excellent leg up track, Payson Park, uh, hasn't missed a beat over there, puts the blinkers on, I believe will go past the four, uh, four and a half number. And, you know, in my opinion, look out. Uh, should go past that number considerably. Uh, and if he does, I think he's absolutely, uh, you know, the horse to beat and a horse with a very good forward moving fat pattern that, that, that if I'm correct about, and he does go forward off that four and a half, even if some of the others go forward, they'd be hard pressed to, to go forward more than I think he will. And, uh, you know, uh, we don't want to get too much into handicap in the race because that's a whole different animal than the thoroughgraph numbers and patterns. But, you know, in my opinion, off the thoroughgraph numbers and patterns, if he doesn't win, it's, it's going to be because of the trip or, or, or the fairgrounds or, you, you know, something like that. But, you know, New Orleans does have that long stretch, and I think that should favor him. They make a move to Tyler Gaffleon. I'm not going to read too much into that, but... Uh, you know, blinkers may get him in the game a little earlier. Uh, I don't think he really has to do that. I think that he can sit, and if the blinkers just get him more focused, um, I don't think he has to get in the game earlier. I think he can just make that one run and that long fairground stretch will, will, will help him out an awful lot. I think we'll probably see him back in the bluegrass if everything goes well. Um, and then probably head to Louisville off the two off the two races, but that's all getting ahead of ourselves. But forward moving pattern, uh, absolutely. Uh, you know, he, he he's so far, in my opinion, the best of what of what we've looked at as far as pattern wise. Not the only one, but the best. Uh, moving forward, Moonlight, um, Moonlight. Another first time three year old as a two year old, 11 and a half, five, seven, nine. Uh, you, know, you know, if he goes past that race at Aqueduct, uh, when he ran that five, which you, you, you know, if he's a good horse, he's supposed to, it's Pletcher. Um, but I don't like closing out your two-year-old campaign, especially for Todd with a five, seven, nine getting slower. Uh, you know, maybe that jump from the 11 and a half to the five took a lot out of him. I don't know. Uh, you know, if he goes past the five, obviously he becomes a contender and, 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 you know, a good horse first time three-year-old should do that. But again, I don't like the, you know, slower slower moving pattern you, you, you know five seven nine and a half to close out the two-year-old year that creates a big question mark in my mind so i'm going to say he's got an iffy or questionable pattern uh now if it was the other way nine seven five i would like it a lot but it's not it's it's the other way so you know 
the numbers don't lie. We can't switch them and, and, and maneuver them the way that we want. They are what they are. So I'm going to I'm going to give a nay on, on, on Moonlight, but with a question mark, iffy. Uh, <clears throat> Real men violin from Kenny McPeak, who has a habit of popping up sometimes when you don't expect it and cause horses producing big races when you don't really expect it. But this one would would really be no surprise. Uh, you know, he started a little slow at Ellis w w with a 16, went to, you know, 11 and three quarters, nine and a half, uh, regressed to 14 and a half, uh, then run a nine, then run a seven. I like the nine, seven to close out the two year old year, pumps back as a three year old, first time three year old, should go past the seven, numbers going in the right way. Uh, but if he does, what do I see? I see a five, a four, um, at best, maybe a three. Uh, that puts him in contention. But if, uh, you, you know, Sierra Leone or, or some of the other ones that have already run faster than him go forward, he's got his work cut out to kind of catch up to them. Uh, Hall of Fame, highly regarded. Steve Asmussen, very interesting horse. Uh, thought his win at the fairgrounds, liked him that day. He was on tracking trips that day. If you're not a tracking trips member, why? You should be. Your second set of eyes in horse racing, mine, they're a, a decent set of eyes. Uh, it's it's, it's just, just, just a great tool, especially in today's day of uh, ADW and, and home wagering and not being at the track. It's just great to have. Uh, another set of eyes on the card and on certain races and certain horses. So um, if you haven't checked out tracking trips yet, go to PastorWyatt.com, check it out. Uh, membership has its privileges. So uh, take a look. But Hall of Fame. Uh, Hall of Fame ran a 12 uh, at Churchill Downs in December, 12 and a half actually to start his career. Uh, comes back at the fairgrounds, runs a five. So like a good horse from two to three, showed that improvement, showed that uh, forward move. We like that. Um, and that was a very respectable race, very respectable number. Uh, and now he's got to do it against a little bit better uh, from the maidens into the stakes. Uh you know, there's not much of a pattern to go by. He's run that five. He's gone past the two-year-old number and done so considerably. So now the question becomes, does he continue to go fast and faster uh, and run better than that number, or does he regress off that big effort? And that is something that can really go either way. But if he's a good horse, like we suspect, and he's in the right hands, which is Steve Asmussen's, which we know are, are good hands to be in, um, we can call him an all-state guy. This horse is in good hands. Uh, I have to think that this is a good horse, and he will continue to run faster, and we haven't seen his bottom as of yet. So I say I'm going to err on the side of caution and say that he is going to move forward, and the caution is that sometimes these horses can go forward so much first time as a three-year-old that, you know, they regress a little and then kind of pick up the progression. But when they're in good barns and well-bred and as, 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 you know, and have a solid connections as, as this horse does, I'm going to say he goes forward again. He's dangerous. He's a contender. Uh, and a five is not that far off Sierra Leone's foreign change. So uh, contender, no question about it. Uh, catching freedom from Brad, Brad Cox, uh, we know how dangerous Brad is, uh, and here's a horse uh, with a very interesting pattern. Uh, nine and three quarters, nine and three quarters, back-to-back -back paired numbers as a two-year-old, comes back, Oakland Park, seven and a quarter. So he goes forward a little bit. And, and those of you that watch these Thoroughgraph shows know this is a pattern I love. I love those paired numbers and then a little progression. Uh, now, we may see another little progression or we may see a big move forward. Uh, because it's Brad Cox and it's a derby prep, I think he's got him sitting on a big forward race and a big forward move. So I would lean towards uh, 
not another slight move forward. Um, I think he's got an excellent pattern. Uh, you know, those, 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 those nines. And then that, you know, seven and a quarter, uh, first time three-year-old, just a really, really sexy, sexy, super cherry pattern on, 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 on the numbers. Now from that seven, where does he go? He can go to a five, a three, a two, even, I mean, he can, he can really jump forward. We know these horses at this time of year tend to make some big, big, big forward moves. And I think he can do that. And if he does, he becomes extremely dangerous. Now, Sierra Leone might, you know, have the edge on him because he's got that faster race and he's going to move forward too. But we're identifying patterns. We're not handicapping the race. And this horse to me definitely has a, 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 a excellent, excellent forward moving pattern here. Um, Cardinal, uh, Todd Pletcher again. Uh, he was a vet scratch in October made his debut in November, ran a 15, uh, went forward to a nine and a half in his first start of the year at Oakland Park, uh, lightly raced, getting better, getting faster. Uh, but again, that nine and a half, even considering it's very possible second, second time three-year-old and, you know, second off a little bit of a break, he goes forward, uh, even even a four or five point move, which would be good, makes him a contender only if nobody else goes forward. And we got a lot of other horses we think are going to go forward. So uh, I think he's got a forward moving pattern, but I don't know that it's enough to uh, put him square with some of the others in here that may go forward. Uh, that said, it is Pletcher. So that makes him a little bit more dangerous than the average bear. But... I tend to think that some of the others have an, have an edge on him as far as uh, where they're at and where they're likely to go. Uh, again, we're already a winner. We got the short bet coffee and this this sweet, 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 I mean, where's the camera? Sexy tumbler. Uh, so we're already a winner and you're already a winner because you're here. So you're looking for the ace, you're in the right place. We're rolling and we're up to resilience from Bill Mott. Uh, this horse, extremely interesting. If, if you're getting familiar with how I read the patterns, this is, this is a pattern that I love. Okay. 15 and a half, first time out at Saratoga, Churchill Downs, seven and a half, uh, Churchill Downs again in November, seven and a half, comes back Gulfstream Park, seven and a half. So we've got seven and a half, three times in a row. Didn't go past this three-year-old number, equaled it. But those three sevens, you know, I like that steady, 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 decent number, not a super fast number, but decent number. Looks like we're going to see a peak race from, from this Colt on Saturday for sure. Uh, seven and a half is not in the scheme of things that far from some of the others in here. Uh, it's ahead of some of the ones that are going to move forward. Very, very, very dangerous pattern uh sneaky good pattern love that look love that pattern and uh i think i think we see a peak from him now if we see a peak from him and it's a peak from sierra leone uh i still got to give the edge to sierra leone but this is no slouch and i think we're going to see a, a significant forward forward move here you know dangerous Track Phantom, uh, probably going to garner the bulk of the attention. Y you know, he's he's got that win at the fairgrounds last time out. He's got the win at the fairgrounds, closing out his three-year-old year before that. Um, handled Nash, who's been somewhat of a, of a disappointment. Also runs Saturday, I believe, dropping back into an allowance spot to get his confidence game back going. Uh, so we'll find out if he's legit or a pretender or a contender. Uh, but uh, they're definitely taking a step backwards with Nash. But Track Phantom, who's really been steady as a rock with a 9, a 9, 7, 5. First time as a 3-year-old, he regressed a little bit and run a 6. 
but he's still right in the same ballpark with a very steady, steady, uh, uh, consistent type of of pattern. I loved the, the two year old progression. I wish that race at the fairgrounds was a five or a four. It's not. Uh, so he's another one that I put in the iffy or questionable category as to going forward, but he's just been so consistent. Uh, now, if that was a five or a four, I would say he's moving forward. Can he go forward second, second time three-year-old? Yeah, maybe, but he's really had no layoff. He's been steady. So I tend to think we're going to see the same type of race and the same type of number, um, six, five, you know, maybe a four, but, you know, I, I think somewhere between a four and a six is what it looks like. And I think you're going to have to run faster than that to win the Risen Star on Saturday. So track Phantom, while he's rock solid and 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 and, and, and just steady as can be, uh, I think there are some horses that are very eligible to jump up and give him uh, a bit of a tussle. Brings us to... Um, the last one, B Dancer from Dallas Stewart, who has a long, well-known history of running big at big prices, not always getting the money and not usually getting the money, but running huge seconds and thirds at big prices in big races when you don't expect it. Well, B Dancer is interesting. Um, you know, he's only got one stock to go by. He run a 10 and a half, and now he runs back off that. So they obviously think they've got something that's worth taking a shot with. Um, 10 and a half is, uh, you know, is not fast enough for me to say, wow, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta include this horse. He can move forward for sure. But I mean, even if he, if he cuts his number in half and runs to a five, that's not fast enough in my opinion. So, uh, you know, be dancer, you know, likely to move forward may regress too off the, off the 10 and a half because, you know, they're throwing him to the wolves right away. And a lot of times, you know, unless you're a really exceptional animal, uh, first time you get thrown to the wolves, you kind of get a pass to get, you know, acclimated with the deep end of the pool. So I think that's probably more likely on Saturday, despite Dallas Stewart's reputation of um, and history, really, of surprising in these big spots. So, uh, you know, even even if he does go forward, uh I'm not I'm not seeing him go forward fast enough in order to win the race. So, you know, I think Sierra Leone's probably got the best potential to run the fastest race. Uh Track Phantom steady, I think we'll see more of the same. Resilience uh very good, very sneaky, very sharp pattern that I love. Uh Cardinal Again, uh, you know, can go forward, but I think is a, a, a little bit of a step behind some of the others. Uh, catching freedom, love the pattern. You know, him and resilience are probably the two patterns I like best behind Sierra Leone for a for sure big forward move. Hall of Fame, you know, he's, a, he's another one that we, you know, we talked in depth about. Uh, and regardless of what happened Saturday, I think he's got the potential, you know, by gun runner to be a, you, you know, a heck, a heck of a nice race horse. And I'm, I'm very curious to see what he does and how he shows up on, 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 on Saturday, real violin, real men violin rather, um, you know, good pattern, uh, first time three-year-old Ken McPeak, uh, you know, would really need to bring it to contend, but, you know, does have a forward moving pattern. Moonlight, we talked about, he's got that reverse reverse pattern that I don't really like. Uh, Sierra Leone, we talked about, you, you know how I feel about, about him. Anna Marie is, 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 you know, definitely got a, a good pattern. Definitely looks like, you, you, you know, a horse eligible to go past that best two-year-old number and that definitely you know puts this horse in consideration if he can bring that game against these kind of horses uh so you know he's another one that you know certainly catches the radar awesome rudo we thought was too slow 
Tizzy and the we thought for sure was too slow, regardless of, of, of where they go. So that's pretty much how I see the Risen Star on the thoroughgraph numbers and patterns. You know, these derby races, and, and I'm sure Jim and Kevin and, 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 and Jim and I have talked more about this on the derby radar shows, but, you know, these are great races, not only to, you, you know, sometimes bet, uh, sometimes they're not great races to bet, but sometimes, and o well, always, they're great races to watch um to put you in a better position for some of those preps going forward and for the big dance on the first saturday in may as well uh, so it's a great thing to pay attention uh to these races and watch these horses and like one of the things we do on tracking trips is we try and watch horses for the future and catch things that are not in the trip notes and are not you know obvious to everybody and uh you know, one of the secrets to doing that is watching races a couple of times, watching different horses all the way around the track, not watching who's in the lead, uh, on the lead, who's making a big move, who's the announcer's calling, or um, who you bet on. Uh, you got to watch them all to pick up something that uh, somebody else might miss to give you an edge going forward. So there you have it, Thorograph, uh, Risen Star, Numbers and Patterns, the way I see it. Uh, another big race coming up out of the country, Saudi Cup. Uh, we've got two big names and probably the two top older horses in the United States this year. Uh, White Barrio, who we loved in the Breeders' Cup Classic, whose thoroughbred numbers and patterns screamed that he could bounce and still win, and the races for second. That's all out on there. You can see it all. Uh, we got him, National Treasure, who we loved in the Preakness, um, who we loved in the, in the in the Pegasus, and had the you know had the numbers and patterns in both of those races. Um, you, you, you know, both of them are heading out to the Saudi Cup for a twelve million dollar race. Uh, both are doing extremely well and at top of their game. And here you'll get a little treat seeing both of them heading to quarantine at Santa Anita before they head off to Saudi Arabia, which they're already there. Um, they already got there. But here's, you know, a little look at both of them, uh, courtesy of our man on boots on the ground at Santa Anita, Jeff Metz. Uh, <clears throat> and you'll see they both look outstanding. So looking forward to watching that Saudi Cup. Uh, I tend to think that White Barrio is going to love um that race and 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 how it comes up and that racetrack and the configuration over there uh and i tend to think we're going to see another another super performance out of him but this race ain't about that um this is about the risen star so that's just a little extra bonus but we'll see what happens thank you everybody for tuning in um check out these two horses get a good look at them um and see some really good horse flesh and the top two older horses in the united states who are currently in saudi arabia on their way to saudi arabia to run in what the 20 million dollar saudi world cup uh so with that uh thank you everybody for tuning in check out all the uh good stuff we got coming up on past the wire check out this week's derby radar i'm sure they'll talk about the risen star on that show as well from more of a handicapping standpoint thank you all appreciate you all let us know in the comments what you think hit the like button subscribe turn on notifications so you don't miss any of these great shows and with that we say ciao for now
Be sure bet coffee play today, which is actually in race eight. I like number one, Francisco Clemente, who I believe should have won last time out in California. Uh, was on the inside, swung very wide, finished very well, was probably best that day, but I think we see an even better race from him today. Down the center, Francesco Clemente. He's trying to shift in, but he's shifting gears. And here he comes now, Francesco Clemente, front and center, and going away to win the McKnight. We're gonna see a very special filly um, in warm heart who is just nothing, nothing but talent. I don't believe, in my opinion, Shug's horse that a lot of people are high on has the seasoning to handle her at this particular point, although he may go on to be a really good horse. Today is today, and the future's the future. Here's Warm Heart. She got through at the rail. What a ride, and Warm Heart has hit the front. The globe trotting Warm Heart is clear. Outside, I'm very busy, charging hard late. Warm Heart wins the Pegasus World Cup turn. If there was ever a race, in my opinion, that pace makes the race, this year it's the Pegasus World Cup. Senior Buscador is a horse that I think can definitely slip into the triples, superfectors, maybe even the exacta. And if something crazy happens and we get a pace meltdown, I think Junior Alvarado is an underrated, very strong finisher. And I think that horse can definitely surprise people and, 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 and make some noise late. here with some exciting news. DRF Formulator, the gold standard in past performance information, is now free exclusively on DRF Bets. Join DRF Bets with the promo code WINNING, get a $250 first deposit match bonus, a $10 free bet, and free Formulator already uploaded to your account. Access Formulator's premium features, including sortable trainer stats, race replays, personalized trip notes, and lots more. Free Formulator, exclusively on DRF Bets. Tracking trips with Pick 6 King, John Stetton. It's one of the best tools in horse racing for any level of player. It's your second set of eyes. Spotting troubled trips, betting angles, track trends, horses to watch and favorites to fade, 10 fakes, ticket structure, and more. At Tracking Trips, you're a friend with benefits. Not a member? You must hate winning money. Join Tracking Trips now. Visit PassTheWire.com and we'll see you in the winner circle. Remember, nobody does it better.
Kentucky's Warrior, quickly in front here by two lengths. Here comes Jackie's Warrior up the inside to take over the lead from Life is Good. And Jackie's Warrior remains undefeated here at Saratoga, and he wins an unprecedented grade one stakes at the spa for the third straight season. Does it better?